Hey everyone, Angelo here, Hollywood filmmaker, greatest screenwriter in the history of the world, recovering homeless guy in my gaming chair I collected off uh, the street. Actually, a neighbor set it out. It's really nice. And surrounded by this beautiful art, most of which I got from Venice Beach. Some I ordered online. No, 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 not that one. That one I got from Venice. Uh, Intuition Skate Shop. And I took four buses today to go about three miles to Beverly Hills to go to a FedEx store. I had too much stuff I was carrying uh, to ride my bike and my legs are so worn out from constant riding lately and um, rollerblading and I need to give them a proper break and walk a little bit to keep oxygenated blood flowing to them. So I, re I love taking the bus. I love taking the metro. I don't love when they're slow. I don't love when they're stuck in traffic. I don't love when they don't show up. And I don't love when, um, that pretty much covers it, right? Uh, there aren't buses running. So that's just a rant I want to go on about. And I know Metro is way short of operators. I read something, I was looking it up, and I, I think it was about two years ago. Look, I don't really know. Maybe it was a different, maybe it was a year ago, maybe it was six months ago. I don't know. But at some point, they were like 500 some operators short and like 30 um, Metro train operators short. Their starting wages are not good. Uh, I forget now what it is. I was looking a few years ago and it was like it went up from like 17 some dollars an hour to 19 dollars an hour. I'm like that is absurdly low particularly for LA. It's probably low just about everywhere in the country to survive because if you're doing that if you're making only let's be generous let's say and, and, and they get to be clear I think now they get like three thousand dollar signing bonuses and you have to start as a bus driver first before you can become a metro operator. And of course, you get union benefits and you get raises. So bus drivers who've been there a while can get paid a lot more. But let's just think about that. You're look, get, getting into a very high responsibility job, um, potentially dangerous job uh, where bus operators uh, have gotten attacked lately. Um, you're dealing with traffic with a massive vehicle you're dealing with the general public aside from being attacked people you know vent to the bus driver and you got to have major people skills and people can make it hard for other people to ride the bus if they're whatever a lot of people it's weird the luck of the draw on buses some it's like everybody takes up two seats and then some it's like everybody's really respectful and sits by the windows and leaves the aisle seat open um or it's just a mix but uh the bus drivers have to contend with all this and just go on and also with um, I believe Metro should be free but people not paying fares and that can be a point of conflict where the driver just has to let them on this happened to me today but because my tap card wasn't working I had ridden like three buses and it worked and then the last one I just kept scanning it, it wouldn't work and the driver's just like yeah, gone um, uh, which should be, you know, that's the norm. I've seen drivers, they'll say like once, like, excuse me, you have to pay, and the person just walks on, they just let it go, because what's the point? There's nothing in it for them to try and uh, make them pay. And again, I think it should be free. Uh, it would benefit the people who need it the most, who need to search for jobs to get around. Anyways, uh, mobility is such a huge factor in uh, being able to get work and get out of bad situations and move, etc. But bottom line is, uh, there are not enough operators. They don't pay enough. If you're making, let's say, even $25 an hour uh, in LA to be a bus driver, you have this huge responsibility. You have punishing hours, exhausting work, stressful work. Um, you may be, you not may, a lot of drivers are having to do mandatory overtime, which just stresses you out, burns you out. It's not good for you. And you're having to live potentially far away from where you work, pay for a car to get to where you want to go because the bus is not reliable, and uh, have roommates. So you may have stress at home because you have crappy roommates, and you're, you're the one who's serving people. You're the one who's helping them. 
I'm convinced any bus driver should be paid more than me. And I'm not clear that they are, especially the new ones. They Now, of course, their benefits, yeah, they're, uh, they seem pretty good. I hope the uh, union covers them. But today, waiting for the bus, the first one, I had no idea. It's on a busy corridor on La Cienega. It took over 30 minutes for it to come. And I think it may have been around 45 minutes when it finally came. It was freaking packed, which that I don't even necessarily mind. I'm just saying it was packed because... Yeah, everybody's waiting for it, and that's the one bus you can take. You can have more space on buses, and I don't mind really standing, but you see people, you know, clearly have issues moving around, older people um, who need seats, and then little kids, too, getting on. And it's like, why shouldn't it be easy for them to get seats? And people were nice in offering their seats and all, but also it makes it impossible or very difficult if somebody in a wheelchair needs to get handicap seats because the way it works on the buses is, there's handicap seating in the front, like the seats aren't facing forward, they're facing the sides, and they can fold up like a row of two or three of them. That way somebody with a wheelchair can get on and the operator can even like sort of strap them in so they don't roll around. Um, but that becomes, I, I don't know how you deal with that, like virtually impossible if the bus is uh, so crowded or you can just ask people to give, I mean, they were giving up their seats like one guy came on and uh, that happened. But I mean, I, there are potential points of conflict where there's too many people and there's potentially not even much room to move over, even if they're standing to make room for somebody in a wheelchair. This is a matter of equity. It disproportionately affects black and brown people who have already, uh, uh, like, are already dealing with so many of the consequences of gentrification and all that stuff and, you know, um, disinvesting in their neighborhoods and lack of job opportunities and healthcare, and now they need this to get around the most, but this is an equity issue for everybody as well, but the people who need it the most cannot rely on it. I was lucky in that today, I was like, oh, screw it. Like I could ride my bike, it would be kind of exhausting, but I was like, I have time, it's no big deal, there's no rush, I'm just going to the store to run some errands, the store's open for a couple hours. But this discourages people from riding. And not only that, waiting for the bus on La Cienega and then Wilshire. So, well, Wilshire, the traffic wasn't bad. La Cienega, traffic is horrible. Sunday afternoon around, well, just around noon. So late morning, early afternoon. So it's stressful. It clearly prioritizes cars. So it's almost like the city of LA treats, and this is how probably most of North America treats public transportation as like punishment for being poor. We're going to starve it of funds. We're not going to prioritize it. The bus um, stops often don't have amenities. There's often not even a, a bench to sit on. No trash cans. No overhead canopy to protect you from the heat. Or in LA, it would be more the heat, but the rain as well. Um, barely any room on the sidewalk. So you're so close to traffic uh, that can be very noisy and move very quickly. And it's dangerous. Um, it's like stressful. It's hostile to people's like senses. It's hostile to um, act to like a human-centered city where people can actually get around uh, without cars. And it's just like depressing to see all this car, the noise everywhere, this sensory bombardment. And of course, the city makes it almost easier to dr just drive because. Yeah, you got to pay all this money for a car. You're overpaying. You're overpaying for mechanics and all that. But yet, so much of the city is so spread out, and so much of is built of it is built with these big arterial roads and boulevards cutting through parts of the city that you don't want to stop at. You just need to get through there. So you're going through other people's neighborhoods. Which I'm not saying that alone is inherently bad, but the idea that these roads are here not to get you to the neighborhood, just get you through there. So someone's neighborhood becomes this congested, noisy, polluted area that's also unsafe, that's dangerous. I see broken pieces of cars all freaking over where I walk and ride my bike. And I see clearly, like, I can piece together what happened. Yeah, car pulling out here, someone speeding, hit them. That's uh, very often the case. Um, when I worked at uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car um, in Virginia, the vast majority of crashes were just rear ends that, you know, it's like somebody stopped at a red light or something, but somebody would get rear ended and it was just like this minor inconvenience. Um, 
but they had to get a rental car while you know the body shop fixed their car. So, so many of these minor accidents happen that are just such a waste, such a drain on people's time. And the only purpose of the car industry is to keep the car industry going. You can get around without cars, but we have to make the city amenable to that. We have to make it walkable and bike friendly, people friendly, wheelchair friendly, uh, scooter friendly, um, and bus and metro friendly. And so I was just thinking about this today. I'm like, I should just speak about it. Because there was a part of me for a split second wondering, like, should I just move to another country? Now, granted, it's not that easy. It's just saying I want to. But should I just move somewhere where they prioritize public transportation and deprioritize cars? Because I'm like, what I saw today was so unpleasant. But then I had a flash of, no, like, that's not who I am. I want to stay here and fight and make it better to live here. Because to me, LA is the greatest city in the world. We just don't all realize that yet. So we're not fighting to make it what it is, which is the best city in the world. Metro, the fastest trains run, I looked this up recently, I can't believe it, is on, I think, the A and E lines every eight minutes. Eight minutes, even during rush hour. If that sounds like, well, what's the big deal, Angelo? Other cities around the world have... Uh, like metro headways of two minutes, three minutes during the busiest times. Moscow has it 80 seconds. I had no idea. I looked up recently or I saw a video pop up of how great uh, the Moscow area's metro is. And they have like, a, what's it called? Like a circular system, a radial system where you don't all, everybody doesn't have to back up, like, like double back to the downtown center to transfer somewhere like in LA for the most part. Your main transfer points are like these choke points where you have to double back all the way to either Union Station or one of the stops around there, generally speaking. And uh, then you can transfer to another line. North and South transportation, so bad enough. That's like the big problem with buses. Like, yeah, East, West, it's not as hard to get bus. In my experience, the places I've gone, like Wilshire runs East and West, I believe, right? No, no, no. Yeah, it does. It does. That's correct. Wilshire is a very busy bus corridor and they're building the purple line out there. They're trying to do it in time for the Olympics. Hopefully they get it done. But um, that would be great because right now the purple line is seven stops and like three or four of those are also on the red line. So what that means is if you need to get somewhere on the purple line, it's only within a few, range of a few stops. And a lot of people don't even need to get on it because they can just get on the red line and they can go further. It goes to Union Station all the way to North Hollywood. But what are we doing? We're making it hard for people who need the most to get around. And we could make it so much easier for other people to give up their cars. Because again, I love riding the bus. But it's so ugly. It's so dystopian when you're just packed in traffic and we're literally just waiting in traffic. When the bus is so much more efficient and getting people around... It should have dedicated lanes. But what are we doing? We're not paying metro operators enough. Obviously, LA has a bigger problem than just, um, you know, what happens on metro as far as, yeah, people in mental crisis, um, people act out, people who criminally act out and hurt people and hurt operators. That's a bigger problem. And arresting people does not solve if solve it. If it did, we'd be the safest country as far as that goes. We have, we'd have the least problems because we arrest people like crazy here. I know the propaganda about LA is, oh, we don't arrest people. Uh, part of the issue is you can arrest them, but what's you, you can't put them in jail for life. And also that would be torture. It's cruel. Jail is torture and cruel. It's brutal. It's inhumane. It makes people worse off. They have worse outcomes for being there. It's disease-filled. Um, there's all kinds of abuse happening there. That's not the answer. The answer is intervention before all that happens. Providing good housing, providing good health care, providing good food, good diet. I've been so concentrating on my diet lately, and it becomes more and more apparent the more I get educated about it, just how awful most food that we sell here is. Why? Because it's profitable. That's it. It's literally like, what's the opportunity to make more profit by selling food that raises your cholesterol, raises your risk for diabetes, hardens your arteries, uh, uh, damages your brain, your eyes, your organs, because it tastes good. Because there's this gap between the profit companies make and the profit they can get other way around. And they want to fill that gap and make a lot of money. That's it. It's it. 
is not necessarily just inherently like this malice. It's that they know there's opportunity there, a new type of cookie. And I'm not saying all that stuff's inherently wrong, but um, all this stuff uh, contributes to problems. But okay, I'm getting off track. Yeah, we need housing for everybody. We need good quality mental health care. Jail cannot be the main provider of mental health care as it is now in, uh, I guess, all the country. I don't know, or at least most of the country. The jail and prison. Uh, that can't be the case. And it's no wonder that we get the outcomes we get. So, yeah, the problem isn't just Metro. It's like not more police on Metro. That creates its own problems of discrimination and abuse and also just fear. And it's uncomfortable. And um, you can't arrest away this problem. Like you need to treat people with dignity and respect and give people the opportunity to have good outcomes. And it's going to take a lot. And it's going to take a lot of intentionality and effort and not prioritizing the rich. But we can do it. Anyways, we don't pay operators enough. We need to pay them way more. We need to prioritize bus routes and metro and build it out faster. I was just despairing that the metro system supposedly is going to be fully built out by 2060 in LA. So another 36 years. So I'll be at least, let's see, I'm 39, 69, nice, uh, plus 6, 75 maybe? Maybe by the time it's done. And, uh, you know, that's a fine age to be taking the metro and all. But even then, will it be actually running the way it should be with quick headways, with lots of amenities, with bathrooms, with metro ambassadors, with, um, you know, food available there? Yes, Union Station has food. The K-Line, I saw they have a free bathroom at one of their stops. That's great. We need more of this stuff. Treat this city like a humane place to live. We do not prioritize um, our transit enough. And again, if you're driving me around to me, you absolutely should be paid way more than me. You should be able to live without roommates. You should be able to live close to where you work. You sh And also, we all should be able to live if we want without cars and get around. Today, again, I was just lucky that like, I eh, was no rush. You know, I was like, the circumstances aren't that dire. I can just wait for the bus. And I'm able-bodied and all, like I could have ridden my bike, but and also it's easy enough to get on the bus and just stand like when it was so crowded, even with my heavy backpack, um, I was shipping stuff. But uh, this should, oh, I'm getting all, my voice is cracking, choked up. This shouldn't be the case. Like we can absolutely prioritize this. So what I encourage, something I just did today, I sent an email to Gov uh, Governor Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom, Governor governor and uh like asking to prioritize active mobility and transit and that's part of a larger movement too that's happening right now i forget the name of the california biking or bike california look up active transportation organizations in your area look up strong towns because this is something that would benefit everyone including and especially drivers because if you don't want bad drivers around you or maybe you are the bad driver not saying not not saying you are of course you wouldn't be it's everybody else who is uh but i've known a lot of bad drivers and i'm like oh you're that guy you're that asshole that cuts people off and honks and drives aggressively and like, you seemed like a normal guy a minute ago. And now you're this animal that just is savage on the roads. If you don't want to be around that, or you don't want to deal with that stress or the financial burden, um, you shouldn't have to drive if you don't want to. But also, you should be able to drive safely and be able to get where you want quickly. Because people like me, uh, who, like, I'm not going to get a car, but... People who are like maybe not as committed to being car free as me or have need to get around long distances and just cannot uh, fall back to public transportation. Um, those people will have to have cars or at the very least get Ubers and Lyfts. And that's a lot of traffic right there, too. You think you're kind of saving on that because it's like carpooling, but it's not. That causes tons of congestion and traffic. Um and crashes and of course there's the microplastics from the tires 
you know, kicking up um, debris, like not kicking up, but pieces of the tires coming off the road, especially for electric cars because they're so heavy and they wear down the roads quickly. So, so much of our um, infrastructure is falling apart on the roads because of heavy vehicles. In other words, not because of bikes. Bikes are not wearing them out anywhere near the rate or pedestrians as uh, private vehicles and trucks. So join organizations, look up other videos, spread the message, educate yourself. Every once in a while, I get sort of like cynical about this and then revitalized about it. And I'm like, this is my chance to speak up. Why not? Like this showed it's a quality of life issue. Just for me to do this simple errand today, I had to take two buses there and two buses back. And uh, it could be so much better. It's not about me. It doesn't need to be for me. What about everyone else? What about the operators who deserve to be able to live comfortably and they're doing such great work? I will say there is one asshole. I can't remember his name, this bus driver. Man, fuck him. Uh, when I was going, I used to go um, to North Hollywood and then take the bus over to the food bank. I forget what line it was, but this guy is such an asshole. Chubby guy with a goatee. Um, somebody was, I was trying to walk out at my stop at the rear entrance, but a guy, you know, he was like obviously like living on the street, had a huge cart, almost completely blocking it off. And literally he like couldn't move it unless he were to just take it off the bus. And I was walking back and I was like, oh shit, I can barely fit back here. I walked up front. And this guy, the bus driver screams, go out the back, go out the back. And I should, I wanted to film him, but I was scared he would just attack me. So I'm like, I can't, like the guy's blocking it. And I was like, well, I'll just go through and squeeze that anyways. And as I'm walking out the bus, I still hear him screaming at that guy, stop blocking the doors, stop blocking. I'm like, this guy is uh, an abuser. He's unhinged. He should not be driving a bus. Um, so fuck him. Yeah, but uh, most drivers are cool. Like they're doing their job. They're good at it. You know, they're doing great work. They should be paid way better. And now I understand there's a sick out happening in protest of drivers being attacked on the bus. And it's like, yeah, I'm not in support of just incarceration and police. That's not the way to do it. It doesn't solve the underlying problems. And if anything, it exacerbates them and stratifies us even more. And it's gonna uh, give more like points of conflict for the police to abuse black and brown people and disadvantaged people and people who just, you know, uh, like, um, like I've heard encounters with the police where someone is hard of hearing or deaf or even just had earbuds and couldn't hear them where the police rage out on them and stuff is it creates so many points of conflict that are unnecessary and we can just do better. Like if you actually want to stop crime and make the city healthy and happy and get people housed, get them housed, get treatment, get alternatives to incarceration and get in there early before it happens and, you know, provide the funding First of all, if any, just a simple matter, keep it staying on topic, for public transportation to get to the grocery store, the clinic, wherever, um, to get the services they need. Uh, anyways, I've ranted long enough. I'm exhausted from this, but you know, let's prioritize transit. Let's make it possible. Uh, let's make this city livable. Let's make this something that's... Um, that makes daily life here so much more pleasurable. Because what I saw today, especially in La Cienega, it was awful. And then I think on Fairfax as well, coming back, just awful. And the bus drivers are overworked and underpaid. Same with the metro operators. But we need to be the ones to put pressure on the city and the state and the federal government to infuse them with funds necessary and whatever, I don't know, bureaucracy, corruption and stuff to push through the measures needed to get the support for the workers there and get the infrastructure in place. And also let's get some fucking signal priority for the trains and buses. The E-Line, how many times do I ride that? And it's so slow going downtown because signal priority means it rides in the street and it actually goes to red lights and through traffic and it stops at the red lights and for traffic because it doesn't have signal priority. It doesn't have signal preemption, meaning, uh, it doesn't automatically just signal to the light ahead, green and, you know, red lights the other direction so it can pass through. Even though it should, it makes sense. But why? We're uh, deferring to private vehicle drivers, which is going to make public, tra which makes public transportation even less desirable, more time consuming. And it, 
it tells people, hey, driving's better than using public transportation. Okay, well, we're gonna get the result we have, which is massively expensive insurance uh, rates in LA, a huge number of car deaths, like over 330 some last year, private vehicle deaths. Um, it's the highest cause of death for kids, even more than in LA, even more than gun violence. And uh, it's causing asthma and cancer and uh, just stress and cutting into our time so much. And it's such a financial burden. So much of our lives are spent working, whittling away that time just to go to the car. So I've rented enough, but let's do it, people. Look up organizations in your area. Here in LA, we have a couple. The main ones I know of are Streets for All. They're great and they're pretty new. Um, I can't think of, uh, oh, there's active mobility groups too in general, like any biking groups you can be a part of that also advocate for bus and metro. There's safe, streets are for everyone. The guy who started that uh, lost his leg riding his bike through Griffith Park from a, a driver hitting him. And um, uh, statewide, I forget the name, the California Bike Advocates, something like that, I swear I have it, but uh, I'd have to stop the video and look at my phone, my email for them. But they sent out the request to email get, uh, Governor Newsom about supporting active mobility. So um, let's do it. Let's make it a more livable city. Don't put Angelo in a car. Don't put baby in the corner and don't put Angelo in a car. Don't make me get an Uber or Lyft. You don't want me adding to your traffic and your commute. You don't want me driving. Uh, you don't want me um, in front of you at the red light. You don't want me in front of you at the gas station. You want me out of the car. Uh, and you want a lot of people like that so that if you want to drive, you can do that conveniently and safely. And if you want a, an affordable place to live, you can have that without all the massive sprawl of suburbs because uh, roads are prior, like private vehicles are prioritized to get everywhere. And which means everything's far apart. The land use, about, okay, a whole different topic. Anyways, everyone, let me know what you think. Look up transit uh, advocacy, advocacy groups in your area. And also just think about riding a bike. Don't give up your car necessarily. I encourage people to, if you can, I know a lot of people, and it's just not practical, you cannot. But you can go car light, meaning try taking the bus sometimes and leaving your car at home. Or get a bike, you can get a cheap used bike, maybe a free one, and ride that sometimes instead of uh, driving a car. It is so much more pleasurable, fun, like joyous. You're like flying over the road and the mental health boost, it, like the feeling, the boost to your energy is great, as well as the physical exercise is fantastic. So try it sometime, just go car light or even walking. Um, see if you can get people in your area to support that. So that's kind of what I'm doing with this video. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. Also, I'll just show off my shirt. Velvet Underground, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.